Uh, James Walsh will not be in attendance this evening, I believe, other than that. Jack Keneally. I haven't heard one way or another. We do have a quorum of five members present. First item on the agenda is to approve the August 26th minutes of the meeting. Have any comments? Hearing none, I have a motion that they be approved. A motion. <clears throat> Second. Second. All in favor? Uh, be one abstention and four approval. Thank you. First of all, I'd like to <clears throat> thank Barbara Lansom, our recording secretary for some time, has left us and move to a new job opportunity, I believe, within our school system. Is that correct? Yes. Wish to thank her on behalf of the board of an outstanding job that she did with, uh, as a recording secretary and wish her well with her new, new endeavors. I'd like to welcome Laura, Laurie Palanza as our new recording secretary. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Uh, one item that I wanted to mention is that the city of Portland uh, sent an invitation to members of the zoning board. They held a training session for members of municipal boards of appeal. That was on September the 11th at the Portland City Hall. I attended and Michael Tranfaglia attended. Uh, I thought the meeting was, was uh, a very effective meeting. Uh, it offered some insight into some new uh, new views. It was led by senior staff attorney Jim Kotsifikas of the Maine Municipal Association. I'm sure I pronounced that incorrectly. Um, he's uh, been a municipal lawyer for over 20 years and he moderated the, the workshop. Uh, they passed out a 14-page workshop outline and, and uh, went over a number of issues, uh, jurisdiction, liability, uh, freedom of access law, meeting procedures. It was quite comprehensive meeting. I thought it was quite effective. Do you have any comments, Michael? I agree. And we wish to thank the city of Portland for inviting us to uh, attend that meeting. I would guess there were 25 to 30 members of, of City of Portland and surrounding uh, municipality board members present. Again, thanks to the City of Portland. Uh, old business, I believe there is none. New business, uh, the first item to hear the request of Mark and Laura Morris. <clears throat> I understand that has been uh, requested to be rescheduled. That's correct. Next month. Will that be on the, the next? Yes, and you'll have uh, information in your packets on that next, next month, too. The second item on <clears throat> the agenda this evening is to hear the appeal of Michael and Jennifer Duddy of 11 Crescent View Avenue for a right side property line variance, variance of two feet from the requested 25 feet to construct a second story addition over the existing garage and breezeway at 23 feet from the property line. I believe Mr. Duddy is present. If you would uh, uh, feel free to make your presentation. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Good evening. Thank you for having me back. As I was saying to Bruce prior to the meeting, I figure if I come back frequently enough, I'll finally get this process right. Um, I am asking for a two-foot sideline, side lot line setback variance to construct an addition over the garage to 
complement um, ongoing renovations that we have at the house. Um, since I was here not too long ago describing the character of the neighborhood, um, I, at this point, would propose to essentially skip over that, try to be very explicit in this application, and we'll answer any questions that uh, the board might have. <clears throat> Do we have any questions from board members regarding the application? I thought the application was very well done. I just want to confirm uh, the proposed scope of the work <clears throat> does not take you beyond the existing uh, boundaries of the building, the building's envelope. Is that correct? Well, it doesn't take us beyond the building envelope to the lot line. <clears throat> The garage is separated from the house currently um, by a, a mudroom that's six foot wide within the lot, well within any back lot line set, setbacks. We will be squaring off the corner, so to speak, of that six foot wide mudroom. Um, so it does exceed infinitesimally um, the footprint of the house, but not in the direction of infringing on any lot line setback. So that, <clears throat> that garage wall, which is closest to the property line, basically the need for the two-foot variance, you're not going beyond that existing. Oh, exactly. Good. Correct. Good. <clears throat> Any other comments? Hearing none, thank you. Thank you. Seeing that there are <clears throat> apparently no members of the audience in support or opposition being none, uh, I think we can close the uh, discussion for the public discussion portion of the meeting. Members of the board, any comments? <clears throat> I took a drive by uh, the house, I guess it was last week, and uh, I find that the, uh, the renovations that are being done are, are very well, well designed and will enhance the neighborhood um, as far as the, the, uh, the lines of the building. And I don't think uh, what they're doing is going to detract at all from, from what's there and existing as far as their neighbors. So I thought, I thought from that perspective it seemed to be well done. I also agree that the application was complete and comprehensive. Clearly, the uh, issue of property comparisons in the neighborhood was well met and far side setbacks was well met and justified for the neighboring properties in that area. And since there will be no further expansion of the footprint of the property uh, into the setback area, uh, I feel that the request has been justified. Any other comments? I reached it. <clears throat> Go ahead. Steve. I basically reached the same conclusion as well. Um, I thought the, the, the application was once again very well done. It spoke to each of the points of the, uh, the ordinance. And I guess I take um, that, the, that the building's current envelope is not being expanded upon. I think that all the homes in that area uh, face very small setbacks as it is. And the ordinance in that particular area might be a little bit difficult to, uh, to follow. And as a property owner, you have certain rights to improve your property, and this would fall within that. Uh, just a point of clarification, although the foundation footprint won't be increased, the, the garage will be garrisoned out uh, by a foot so that the envelope, the footprint, or cantilever is, is not measured to the foundation, it's measured to the cantilever. So just for the record, you would be approving <clears throat> that extra foot garrison. 
Would the garrison be on the front of the building? The, yeah, on the front, right. right. By the foot. Am I correct in that? But no closer to the property line. Right. Okay. And the front setback would be met. Right. The front would remain in, in within the boundary of the setback. Correct. Would not encroach upon the setback, front line setback. And the <coughs> rear setback is not a factor. With no further discussion, <coughs> shall vote on the conclusion. Number one, the proposed variance is not a substantial departure from the intent of the ordinance. All those in favor? Zero opposed. Number two, a literal enforcement of the ordinance would cause a practical difficulty. All those in favor? Zero opposed. Number three, the need for the variance is due to the unique circumstances of the property and not to the general condition of the neighborhood. All those in favor? <clears throat> Zero opposed. Number four, the granting of the variance will not produce an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood and will not unreasonably detrimentally affect the use or market value of abutting properties. All those in favor? Zero opposed. Five, the practical difficulty is not a result of the action taken by the applicant or prior owner. All those in favor? Zero opposed. Six, no other feasible alternative to a variance is available to the petitioner. All those in favor? Zero opposed. Number seven, the granting of variance will not unreasonably adversely affect the natural environment. All those in favor? Zero opposed. Eight, the property is not located in whole or in part within shoreland areas as described in Title 38, Section 435. All those in favor? Zero opposed. May I have a motion, please? <clears throat> I'll move that the uh, variance is proposed by Michael and Jennifer Duddy be approved as uh, applied for. Do I have a second? I second that. All those in favor? Zero opposed. The motion passes. Thank you. Communications. Hearing none. Next meeting would fall on no Tuesday, November the 25th, two days before Thanksgiving. I don't know, in the past we have looked at that schedule week uh, from a vacation standpoint. I don't know if we should do that at this time or... Well, you got five out of seven. If, I suppose you could pose whether that's going to be a I'll problem. I'll be here. I, I won't be here the following week. I'll be out, but uh, I'll be here on the 22nd. I will as well. I'll be in town. I'll be in town. Okay. Next scheduled meeting then is November the 25th. Any further business? Hearing none, may I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. Meeting is adjourned. <laughs> <That was great. laughs>